We're doing the liver. Do, 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 do. And we're gonna start, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna start with a wide kneed child's pose. And this time, no twist. So you take your knees as wide as they go. And just stretch yourself out, bringing your forehead to the ground, reaching your arms long. Take a full inhale and with your exhale, just a noisy, dramatic sigh or grunt or swear word even. <sighs> and let's take these first couple of breaths and really actually invite everything in. good stuff, the bad stuff, the in-between, the confusion, the clarity. Feel all of your muscles soft and relaxed. It's an, always an option in yin yoga to work on your bandhas, but you do it even more lightly than we do it. It's really much more of an intention. One teacher described to me that anytime you do a bandha, it's you know, the force you would use to close the flower petals of an open flower. But as the body relaxes, having that one point of focus or concentration helps us be in balance. So it's quite appropriate that our liver series here starts in what feels like a bow, surrendering, really to the ground. We can understand that part of why we have this magnificent human body in the form that it is in now is because we are here on earth. And instead of trying to reject it or dominate the earthly nature of our bodies, we really want to invite our being into our body. You can imagine just the transformative qualities that are working both on the body, but on our being. By having this exquisitely dual nature, dual, it's way more complex than that. But you know, we're of the body, but we're not of the body. And we, we have spirit, but we have to align and, and work to be in the body, even though we need to work to liberate our spirit. The manifest goes together with the unmanifest. The yin goes together with the yang. And now slide your knees together. And maybe you even just slide into Sphinx, moving your upper body forward, finding your way onto your elbows. Mm. 
we have such an intrinsic nature around always making um, everything like against each other. It's like body versus spirit, or like good versus evil, yin versus yang. I totally get like the Taoist thing. <laughs> you know, we, we as our Western tra- trained mind and our Western cultured, I don't know, social being, we're nearly asleep to this incessant making something against something else. One thing better than the other. And we see this even in our humanity. So there are so many strong impulses in the world of like, oh, spirit, spirit is better than body. And so we're going to ignore the body or we're going to try to just shut down as much as we can of the body, but just work on spirit. And there's those who even move further than spirit and just get lost in fantasy. (coughs) Excuse me. And then we have so many who have the impulse that it's really just a physical experience. Just work on your body and you should solve everything. But in our self-realization practice on the mat, in our body, in our being, We know that to truly be alive is to constantly be playing with this balance. How can I be most honest in my spirit? How can I be most honest in my body? Can I find places where my inner activity matches my outer activity? Take another full inhale, maybe even lift up. And then you can go into either plank or um, forearm plank and bring your right knee forward to your right wrist or elbow. We're transitioning into sleeping swan with the right knee forward. I it's not like compulsive, maybe it isn't for you, but I always like to start by lifting up, taking a full inhale, and then walking and stretching myself out into the pose, reaching my hands together in prayer, stretching back to my big toe on the left foot. Take a full inhale, like you're getting to know the shape for the first time. And with your exhale, sigh it out. Welcome the shape, welcome your body in this form. I 
think we have such a, oh, there it is, how excellent. We have such a, um, we easily feel, fall into this trap of staticness with our body and, and maybe even our, our spirit. But this idea of, you know, that's the way I am, or this happened, or this is true for me, so I'm going to be this way because that is true. We hear in people's biographies, you know, this happened to me, so I never feel safe, or I don't trust. But our, our body is, is never static. Our spirit also is not, even in its like steadfastness or consistency, is of a living quality with a pulse and a life force to it. And when we dwell in our body and we breathe in intention and we, you know, rhythm, rhythmize, you know, we bring intentional rhythm to our breath or we sing a song or we speak words from our heart, it has a creative effect on our physicality, on our beingness, our body, our part of the earth that is here. In our being, that verb, that life force brings a dynamic and vibrant field to every cell in our body. With your next inhale, lift up your chest. And we're gonna move from sleeping swan to shoelace. So you bring your left leg around and you open up. So you move your left, your right shin more parallel with the top of your mat. And then you're gonna try and stack your left ankle to the outside of your right knee. So if I had a little, you know, I was gonna say plain, but I guess it could be also one of those thingies. <laughs> Drones, it could be a drone. Um, but the aerial view where you wanna have your shins stacked and your feet sticking out the side. Oh, that's a good, like, thank you. <laughs> Shoelace pose. <clears throat> Sabine's looking at me like she's finally lost it. So what I meant by stacked is you want one knee on top of the other. You just have to wiggle in. There you go, wonderful. And the aerial view is then more of a triangle shape. <laughs> Bring your hands next to your hips, slide your butt back. Inhale, lift up and with your exhale, drape your chest over your knee or bring your chin to your knee or bring your forehead to your knee. I, I feel so, I'm so happy that Mercury is going direct on Friday because it always seems to affect my <laughs> left brain thinking, my ability to speak. Take a full inhale, knowing, feeling, getting to know the shape and with your exhale, just sigh out. Ah. Oh. With the liver and the gallbladder, 
you can feel just, you know, they're much more of a yang ish pair. But the yin is technically the liver and the yang is the gallbladder. And the liver is um, connected in esoteric schools to Jupiter. And whenever you find Jupiter influence on something, what it will show us is this nature of expanding. So you can picture very much like how a tree grows, a tree grows and the trunk is always expanding. The reach of the arms are expanding. The leaves get bigger. There's an expansion in how it grows. And so this, this force of you know, moving up and out in the visible world is mirrored by really still the analogy of the tree in the invisible world rooting down and deep. But even underneath the surface, below our attention, as it's mirroring the same effect. So as it goes down, it still has this expansion. With your next inhale, roll up. And with your left leg on top, you're gonna to stretch your right arm up to the sky. And you're gonna to bow towards your left. So you're really trying to let all of the ribs move. Maybe you can drop your left elbow, maybe not, but you wanna keep your heart and chest lifted. We're not gonna stay in this position for five minutes. So that's pretty nice, especially if I pay attention to the clock, which I am. But it is a little bit like you get to be like a weeping willow tree. <laughs> Notice where you can soften and where you can kind of relax, even in the intensity of this pose. <laughs> I like it maybe just at the fingertips. Definitely my pinky, my pinky is so relaxed right now. And then with your inhale, you're gonna lift up your arm. You're gonna put your left foot onto the ground, continue to stretch up and continue to turn to your left, bringing your elbow to the outside of your knee or even hugging your left knee towards you, coming into a classic twist here. So you wanna feel your sit bones on the ground. You wanna feel your left foot on the ground. You can feel that you're helping yourself stay upright with your left arm. Inhale, feel like you're getting taller. Exhale, feel that you can release into the twist more. Maybe you can engage your bandhas here. So this expansion of Jupiter, expansiveness, or far seeing um, is so wonderful because by design, what is foreign to us or what is new man-made in the world is uh, met by Jupiter. So you get, you get your liver is designed to help you get rid of toxins or poisons or um, substances. We don't even know what they are yet or what they're, what they're made of. Take another full inhale, exhale, twist a little bit more, and then unwind. Stretch both your legs out in front of you. Maybe wiggle them around a little bit. Maybe just shimmy them side to side. 
and then cross your ankles, roll over your crossed ankles. And we're gonna move either into Sphinx or Seal. That is a nice version. I'm gonna show everyone this one, just like dropping your knees side to side. Very good, very good. Cross your ankles, roll over your ankles. And only if your spine agrees, can you come into seal. So with seal, you stretch your arms out. You can have them further away from you, closer to you, wider. You can make the adjustments, see what suits your body today. And then breathe into the pose, get to know the pose. Because this is a yin class, especially if you, if you ever have gone too far or can't hold anything anymore, we're not practicing forcing things more. So then, you know, especially if there's sharp pain, like come out of it, come let your seal become a sphinx if it needs to. The Holy Longing by Goethe. And my darlings, I don't have it here in German, so I'm gonna read it in English. Missed opportunity. <laughs> Tell a wise person or keep silent because the mass man will mock it right away. I praise what is truly alive what longs to be burned to death in the calm water of love nights where you were begotten, where you have begotten. A strange feeling comes over you when you see the silent candle burning. Now you are no longer caught in the obsession with darkness and a desire for higher lovemaking sweeps you forward. Distance does not make you falter. Now, arriving in magic, flying, and finally insane for the light, you are the butterfly and you are gone. As long as you haven't experienced this to die and so to grow, you're only a troubled guest on this dark earth. You're only a troubled guest on this dark earth. As long as you haven't experienced this to die and so to grow. And count for yourself and enjoy 10 more full unhurried breaths. And when you're ready, you can transition into plank or forearm plank or downward facing dog or whatever, and bring your left knee forward, setting up. Oh, am I doing, am I just doing what I've been doing all day, which is screwing up my sequences? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> surprise. So you're going to bring your left knee forward, stretch back with your right toes, lift up, and with your exhale, walk your hands, extending your body forward. Let your hands come into prayer. Your forehead touches the ground. Reach through your big toe. Take a nice inhale to know the form, and with your exhale, 
relax into it. This poem by Goethe, you know, when we're young or, or when we're <laughs> new to thinking, it can be a little bit like, huh, how can I, why, why would I have to die in order to live? But it's actually this very, this amazing um, phenomena in our liveliness. In the meeting of our physical body with our spiritual self, that it isn't without change. And one of the most dramatic changes for us will be in our becoming. You know, um, you can even, We, we tend to, when we, we imagine these like steps to uh, being alive or coming to yourself, whatever, um, like more authenticity, we can kind of be seduced into this idea that it's a step-by-step -step path or a slow and gradual maturing. But it's actually these, also these, you know, these betrayals and shocks or misunderstandings that become revealed that actually are the impetus of us transforming. You know, the, the butterfly only comes after um, the caterpillar basically has completely disintegrated. You know, there, it's like this like primordial like mush without form in the middle of that cocoon and in, in that transformation. Because, you know, in my over simple, you know, child mind, I could see like, oh, the caterpillar, like what, like the, 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 maybe the skin of the caterpillar opens up and stretches out into butter, like the wings of a butterfly. But no, it's this absolutely complete melting down, breaking down, letting go of what was thought to be normal or true in order to reform as this transformed creature. We have images all around us about, you know, how nature embodies what we want to get to know on every level in our earthly experience. You know, have you ever felt like a snake shedding your skin and like being new and having kind of a restart? Or maybe you've also felt like you've woken up from a hibernation and just been like, whoa, where did those three or four months go? With your next inhale, start to walk your hands towards you. And you're this time gonna sweep around your right leg, stacking your right knee on top, making room so you can sit your buttocks down on the ground. And then I like to stretch up a little bit, however you wanna do it. Maybe just lift up your chest with your exhale, walk your hands forward and drape yourself over your knee.
so you can hear and you know that the liver is and the gallbladder are in the wood element. And while we may not have rings that we can tell how old we are when we are cut open, we also have elements like wood or like tree. There is a truth in all of the elements that we have in balance in our physical body, but also how what's able to happen in our um, not only energetic body, but our etheric body or our body of desire and ideas in the astral body. I mean, even ultimately in our spirit body, yeah, we have this this capacity to move beyond and to reach and to root down. But wood in the traditional Chinese five element system is the one that we associate most with growth and change. I mean, of course, a fire can grow. Of course, a rainstorm can grow. But we don't plant a fire and hope it grows. We rarely plant a fire and hope it grows. But this, this element of wood echoes the expansiveness of Jupiter. If we look at the body, what it is to live, we start to understand that it's actually for all of ourselves to be born and to die. But before we die in this pose, let's come out of it. Inhale, roll up. I know it's not a gentle area to be. And this time you have your right knee on top. So you're going to fix your hair and lift up your left hand and drape it over your newly fixed hair. <laughs> Maybe just a little fluff. And you want to feel that your chest stays upright, but you're really allowing your arm to be heavy so it can pull. You can be more reachy if it feels comfortable. Again, knowing we're not going to stay here for five minutes, maybe you start to sink your right elbow towards the ground. Maybe it even gets there, not on my body, not today at least. We want to inspire people to live. And it sounds, it sounds so silly, but when, you know, when kids are depressed or when, you know, you're surrounded by concrete and, and fear or, you know, there, there has, there is kind of this epidemic of people just not really wanting to be here on earth, not wanting to be alive. I haven't forgotten you. Just a couple more breaths. And I feel like that happens, it happens at the edges of our communities. It happens at the edges of our, of our eyesight. All right, inhale, lift up. And then place your right foot on the ground, stretch up or you're still up with your left arm and then turn away from it. 
Maybe bring your elbow to the outside. Maybe hugging your right knee towards your chest. You can use your left arm behind you to help you stay upright and lifted. But this enthusiasm for life can be easy to not value or not think so much about. Because we fear death, we assume people are treasuring life, but it doesn't always work out that way. I mean, a little bit like when, when we make any decisions, when we make a decision out of fear, it, it drains us. When we make a decision out of courage, you'll find you have more energy. It empowers us. And for some, it really is this, we need to lean into metaphoric deaths or death of ideas or to really start to kind of find the preciousness of life. Take another inhale, get taller with your exhale, and lifted chest, twist more. And then unwind. And now you're going to just take your legs out enough to come into square pose. <laughs> yeah, it's the liver. It's supposed to make you angry. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can bring your hands. Your, your top knee might be way, way up. That's fine. Maybe it's dropping down. And you're going to bring your hands next to your butt and just slide your booty back so tucking your tail and then lift up and then start to walk forward the reason this should be the cobbler pose or the shoes is because it feels like you know new shoes pinching breathe into the tightness of your hips Notice if you can even breathe in the smartingness of your hips. And then with your exhale, breathe some love and warmth and maybe even a little bit of joy to your hips. In traditional Chinese medicine, even, um, the liver is called the seat of your soul. And you'll find when you're studying mysticism um, that people actually switch soul and spirit in different traditions in different places. It's quite confusing, um, maybe by design. But for, for me, I, I when I... I understand that the seat of the soul, um, but I would even say it could be the seat of the spirit because in traditional Chinese medicine, they talk about two souls, the animal soul and the forever eternal bodiless soul, which is the one that is the seat, the, its seat is the liver. that this incredible organ that is designed for our unknown future in part is designed to carry this invisible part of us. And it's connected to such an earthly substance. I mean, as all of them are, but this, the substance of wood, that even in the wood, there is a living nature still there even the, after the tree has been cut and the wood has been cured. 
And what's so cool is like cabinet makers, they know this, they know they have to make cabinets in a way that um, it can, they can, there's enough space for it to expand in the moisture and the heat and enough allowance for it to contract in the cold in the winter. Inhale, lift up. And then lean back onto your elbows with a maybe dramatic hip pop if you got that. <laughs> Switch your legs or roll back up. We're coming to the other square. So this is square pose. In our astrological chart, when our when a planets are squared to each other or aspects are squared to each other, it is the most creative tension, which is a, a sneaky way of just saying it's hard. So take a full inhale, breathe in the tenderness and with your exhales, roll into it, reach forward, bow forward, letting your head drop. We wanna stop marshalling good to one spot and bad to another spot. We wanna to start to really include and invite everything in. So if this posture feels <clears throat> bad, what else can you invite in? Where, where could it be held with your attention or with your feelings, or maybe it's a small adjustment or engaging your bandhas? or just working on being soft today, maybe a little bit more gentle. So again and again with the liver, we're told how important it is. It gets the name, the liver. It's the verb to live. It's the seat to our forever soul or to our spirit. It's designed for the unknown for future. For us as a spiritual bodily being to be moving forward in time. Prepared for the unknown. And with your next inhale, roll up. And we're going to just slide our feet out. You can, you know, wiggle and shake them if you need to first, of course. Um, but then you're going to bring the bottoms of your feet together. And we're going to come back into reclining butterfly. Let your head drop back. If it's okay for your neck, else you can keep your chin here. Eventually, we're going to go all the way down to the ground. So if you need to do that before I tell you to, give yourself permission to. In our modern day understanding of the body, we have such richness and detailed experience of the human body. But still there is this drive and, and I'll just leave it at drive, to discover kind of the evidence of our subtle body of how the nadis work in our body or how, you know, we have the sushumna channel or, you know, on and on. There's all of these mysteries still in the body. If we're paying attention to what not just 
mainstream sponsored science is telling us, but all the alternative explorations, all the traditions of naturopathy and homeopathy and um, healings and, you know, shamanism, all of these kind of fringe practices are working with the body of energy, the body of light, this essential element to each one of us being alive, whether we um, admit it or, or witness it ourselves. Let your elbows slide out to the side, allowing yourself to come all the way down. And we're gonna take triple diamond pose. So just like your feet are together, you're gonna bring your thumbs and your index fingers together. And you wanna have um, the other finger stretching out. So you're making kind of like this nice organic shaped diamond. You're gonna place that on the ground and then just slide your thumbs just to where your head and the ground meet. Again, we have this, this place of meeting us and the earth. And that, this is an anger releasing pose. Maybe we should be calling it an anger transforming pose and stay disciplined in not getting in the habit of just dumping all the things we don't like energetically into the spaces around us. Or, you know, I mean, it's, it's a misuse of the human being if we're not up to transforming icky, gross things into nicer, beautiful, great smelling things. So whenever, um, well, whenever I feel quite, when I feel challenged by the attachment of life, um, whether jealous of something or fearful of loss or um, even just out of balance, what I often return to is Buddha's five remembrances. It's over the years, it's become nearly like a friend that I, you know, will take me out of dark places. Um, I'm going to read it the way it was written down by Thich Nhat. I am of the nature to grow old. There's no way to escape growing older. I am of the nature to have ill health. There's no way to escape ill health. I am of the nature to have, I am of the nature to die. There's no way to escape death. All that is dear to me and everyone I love are the nature of change. There's no way to escape being separated from them. My actions are my only true belongings. I cannot escape the consequence of my actions. My actions are the ground upon which I stand. As so we can see the liver and the gallbladder just in what they engage in are demanding us to find the places where we get to be brave, find the places where we can live more or risk 
Take the challenge. Try it out. With your next inhale, start to stretch your legs long. Maybe you want to put your feet in the ground and just roll your lower back down to the earth, getting ready for Shavasana. So I always like to lift up my hips and then just roll my spine one vertebrae at a time down. If my lower back hurts, I keep my feet as wide as the yoga mat and then I drop my knees back together. So they're, it's a very passive place. If your legs, if your legs, your legs are great. If your lower back's okay, when you stretch your legs out, stretch your legs out. Take your palms open to the ceiling, lift up your chest, pinch your shoulder blades together and just drag your shoulder blades down your spine and then drop your ribs down. Close your eyes, allow your breath to return to normal. Try to keep your attention in the room, in your body, and rest. With your next inhale, start to invite your awareness to the edges of your body. Welcome your precious awareness with some wiggles, maybe a smile. And on your next inhale, stretch your heavenly body long. You can add wiggles, <laughs> you can add a beat. And then with your exhale, curl into a ball, hugging your knees to your chest. If it's comfortable for you, you can roll onto your side and then help yourself up into a comfortable seated position. And 
Bring your hands to heart center. Maybe you dedicated your class to someone, just lift up an image of them. With a few breaths, just feel like a source of light. And let's sound an om. Empty your breath. Take a full inhale. Ah. Bring your prayer hands to your third eye, invite the divine light. And as we bow forward together, we say namaste. So much love. Make some noise. Yeah. Thank you so much. Go out there and be wonderful. That's what the world needs.